This is Twit. So when we're talking about, you know, yesterday's hearing, there's something that kind of came up at a couple of different points throughout the hearing. And I don't know, I, I, maybe I just hadn't like drawn the connections between the two things. But this this talk about China's kind of new approach to the Internet. And it turns out that our guest Stephen Shanklin from CNET wrote about this uh, this Internet a couple of weeks ago. So I reached out to Stephen and Stephen joins us now. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Yeah, thanks very much for having me on. Yeah, it's good to see you again. It's been too long. Yeah. <laughs> so first, let's talk a little bit about how um, China's new IP plan, as it's called, how how that plan kind of surfaced, like, and in what context to yesterday's hearings. Sure. Well, China has a lot of ideas for how it thinks the Internet should work, and those came up yesterday in Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg's testimony. So obviously Facebook is under a lot of pressure right now for not controlling its platform enough so that it's uh there you know the manipulations, disinformation, lies, all kinds of stuff that people think is bad for society happening on Facebook right now. So to kind of reverse uh to, to give uh Congress a different idea. Zuckerberg raised this boogeyman of China. Well, he's basically saying, you think uh, all this free speech has uh, got a downside? Well, look what's happening in China right now. Free speech and innovation is a lot harder there. So you might want to control things better on Facebook, sure, but you don't want to go the direction China is. So he was sort of raising this as an alternative bad guy to make Facebook look better. OK. All right. Um, and definitely, you know, now now is the time for that message to be very potent. There's been a lot of pushback on on the kind of China influence and in technology, especially here in the U.S., which we'll talk about. But what is this new IP plan? This you, this is, you know, at great length what you what you wrote about a few weeks ago. And it was just kind of the first time that I was like, OK, new IP that I hadn't heard that term. But what is the idea here? This is not necessarily Internet as we know it. It's a new kind of Internet. It actually, as I as I'm speaking out loud, it reminds me of the Silicon Valley kind of plot theme where they were going to create a new Internet. It's exactly that, <laughs> except different because it's in China and China is, as you say, the boogeyman. So what is new IP? Yeah, well, IP stands for Internet Protocol, and it's one of the key standards that makes the whole Internet work. It's been around since the get go uh, decades ago. New IP, it's just a label. It's not like an official brand name or an official technology. Right now, all it is is a proposal. So we don't actually have working specifications. We don't have network equipment that supports it. We don't have algorithms that figure out how to route data from one system to another. It's ideas at this stage. It's got some a lot of shiny whistles, lots of uh, fun things to it. So uh, the companies that are backing it, uh, some of them state owned and and Huawei, which is obviously uh, in uh, a lot intense political scrutiny right now in the West. Uh, the the outfits who are backing this, uh, they see problems with today's Internet and they want to fix some of those problems. And the 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 approach they're taking is they're saying, well, we need a new Internet, a new Internet technology plumbing that will allow a lot of cool features. So they raise some interesting examples like holographic communication, which is what we're doing right now. But instead of a video feed, you get a full fidelity three dimensional hologram. Sounds cool. Another one is remote driving. So you have uh, delays in the network are low enough that you'd be able to control something far away with you know very little little lag. So that's useful for remote driving or telemedicine. Another idea is linking lots of separate networks like uh, satellite uh, internet to our regular internet. So you know, for example, Elon Musk's uh, Starlink satellites uh, orbiting right now. Maybe those would get along better with today's internet. Uh, and then another big piece is better security. So you would be able to uh, attribute uh, the source of an attack over the Internet, like a, a denial of service attack where you flood a, a server with a whole lot of traffic and you take it offline. That would be easier to block. So there are some nice ideas in there for sure. And those ideas are really leading the sales pitch for the new IP plan. It first emerged uh, – very quietly last year in a United Nations agency called the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union. This is a government-controlled, uh, government-run agency because it's the United Nations. 
And it's very different from how the internet is developed uh, today. And uh, this has been bubbling for several months now, and it's now uh, much higher profile because there's another uh, big ITU meeting coming this November. Uh, it's one of their four-year meetings, and that's where these Chinese players really want to get uh, the new IP plan to stick to get a whole lot of support for it, uh, chiefly by governments. So as you're talking about kind of the the things that it promises, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to like look at the internet that we have and understand why those things aren't possible as as is now um and i and i also fully realize like there's there's a flip side to this of course it gives governments way more control and way more power over the internet right now there there isn't a whole lot of control that can be gained uh this new plan would give that control so that obviously there's that benefit uh, especially for a government like like the one in china but is the current internet like for for the for the upsides that you listed there uh capable of these things already uh yes and no so if you want to you know have terabytes of bits per second transferred enough to uh support real-time holographic communication no it's not up to that um it's that's just way too much uh, network capacity than we have today uh, mm -hmm. But you have to realize also uh, today's Internet is not yesterday's Internet or the Internet that was invented a few decades ago. It's a right. constant work in progress. And in fact, the loose uh, uh, affiliation of standards groups that develops the Internet is already working on every single one of these technologies, lowering latency, improving uh, uh data transfer capacity, uh, improving security. A lot of those things are not uh, radical, shocking new ideas. Why didn't I think of that? No, that's exactly <laughs> what they're thinking of. So uh, whether they can get it done or not is another question. But you have to compare today's internet to the one that existed before. I mean, right now we're having a real-time conversation over video stream. Uh, that was utterly unthinkable in the internet I first started off on, which was just about up to, you know, sending email. So it's really profoundly transformed. And the exact uh, uh, multi-stakeholder model, it's called, that developed uh, today's internet is working on tomorrow's internet as well. Yeah, to a certain degree, it kind of feels like a little bit of a Trojan horse, like, look at all these great things. And uh, oh, they're all, by the way, there's these things that you wouldn't necessarily find great, potentially, depending on who you are, what country you are, whatever, the fact that we have full control over thing, everything. And that's the real reason why we want to create this. It seems to seems to feel that way anyways. Um, now, you uh, you write that it would be incompatible with the current Internet. Um, there would there would be would there be any sort of kind of collaborative relationship between these two technologies or uh, completely off on its own island? That's not exactly clear. Uh, in order to build this new IP internet, you would have to completely change all the existing technology, hardware and software for routing data from one place to another. So you would have to really significantly rebuild the internet. That would be incompatible with today's internet. And that's one of the biggest practical problems new IP has. You could build bridges between the new IP internet and today's internet. And so in principle, data could uh, you know, trans, uh, transfer from one side to the other. But that adds a lot of expense. And unless you can convince people to completely move away from the old internet, then you just end up running two internets. Uh, and that's really expensive, really complicated, and a very practically difficult uh, problem that new IP faces. Yeah. Now, if you end up in a scenario where, you know, some of the big tech companies like Facebook, although Zuckerberg kind of made his point known as far as how he feels about this idea, if they were to suddenly back it to some degree, that could actually you know, that that could actually sway things a little bit and create the support or the interest needed in order to do this. Has there been been any interest that we know of outside of some of these companies uh, and forces inside of, of China to say, hey, well, actually, we could we could get behind this, uh, even even if there's you know stipulations around that to say we could get behind this if this and if not that. Like, has there been any interest in short? No, uh, the 
current people who develop the internet are often employees at these uh, tech giants, Google, mm -hmm. Facebook, Cisco. Uh, those are the kinds of people who have a lot of expertise in understanding how the existing internet works. Uh, and the interesting thing here is that uh, – these companies, these big companies like Microsoft with Azure, Amazon with Amazon Web Services, Google with Google Cloud, and all the websites they operate and all the services online they operate, all the internet infrastructure they operate. In effect, all these companies have veto power over what comes out of some United Nations agency. So it could be in principle that the United Nations will step up and say, ah, oh, this is an opportunity for us to have a much bigger say on this very important technology. Uh, but all these companies, if they don't like it, they just won't bother with it. And so that is, you know, the, that's the gap between one organization creating a standard and then the ground truth of how technology actually works in the real world. So there is really very little support that I detected in the technology world. Now, that's a very U.S. centric technology world. The Internet was invented in the United States and a lot of United, United States based companies dominate it. Uh, and so that could change in the future, of course. But right now, there I really didn't detect any enthusiasm for new IP out there in the real existing technology landscape we have today. Yeah, it does make me wonder because I hadn't really uh, spent much time considering this before. Um, I mean, you you mentioned just a few minutes ago. I mean, the internet is constantly evolving. What it was 20 years ago is, you know, so different from where we are now. Have to imagine 20 years from now, things are going to you know be exponentially even more different. But at the same time, like it, it does beg the question, like at some point, this thing that we invented 20, 30 plus years ago, will it hit a point to where it just makes more sense to create a new version of this altogether based on what what needs we have wherever we are down the line when we decide to do that? Um, or, or does it, you know, constantly, continually evolve and what does that look like? I mean, obviously, I know that you don't you don't have the ability to look into the future. But what do you what do you feel like if you if you look at this um, and, you know, from from your heart space, like, do you do you kind of feel like at a certain point the Internet just needs to be re revamped in some way or is it good enough to, to stand the test of time? That's not clear to me. I do think the Internet has proved remarkably resilient and mm -hmm. uh, the foundation that was laid decades ago those two key protocols, TCP IP, Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol, that which govern pretty much how most of the data is sent these days on the Internet, perhaps not most because there's another one in there that's widely used for video. But, it, you know, that foundation has been incredibly robust and there are very smart people working on improving it. I don't know if at some point it runs out of steam and you have to tear things up and start completely from scratch. But I will say that they are working on some pretty difficult problems and already some of the ones new IP hopes to address included on that list. And uh, there are a lot of some of those shiny bells and whistles that the new IP folks are trying to hold out as a reason to adopt it. For example, really low delay communications, good for remote piloting of an aircraft or a car, good for telemedicine so you can do surgery across the continent. There are fundamental physical limits and there are fundamental technology issues in actually implementing that kind of uh, that those kinds of benefits that uh, maybe our current Internet won't be able to support those. But it's not clear to me that the new IP actually would be able to either. Right now, it's just an idea. It's at the idea phase, not the working technology phase. So uh, we might run out of steam with the current internet, but it's proven remarkably resilient, and it's very hard to change. We've seen many times in the technology world uh, the tremendous advantage an incumbent technology has, uh, in part because a lot of uh, existing vested players spend a lot of time and energy improving it, and that's where we are with the internet today.